Hello guys! So, for today, we will be discussing one of the practical applications of differential calculus. We will be solving problems by applying the concepts of maxima and minima. But before we proceed, please make sure you already have a solid background on differentiation and how to do it to different types of equations. So, without further ado, let me introduce to you the three steps in solving problems involving maxima and minima. Step number one, find the equation of the variable to be maximized or minimized. Of course, in solving these types of problems, it is very much important to recognize what is being maximized or minimized, and then finding the equation involving that same variable. Step number two, set the first derivative of the equation to zero. So in step number one, it is where you formulate the equation, and in step number two, this is where the actual differentiation happened. And remember, you have to set its value to zero. Step number three, answer what is asked in the problem. I think this is the most important step in solving these types of problem because sometimes, even if you get the right answer in step number one and step number two, but if you fail to recognize what is being asked in the problem, you will still arrive at a wrong answer. Okay, so let us apply these steps in solving sample problems. We have here sample problem number one. Find the largest area of the rectangle with a perimeter equal to 180 centimeters. So in this problem, we have a rectangle with an unknown dimension. We let it be L for the length and W for the width. To solve step number one, Step number one is to find the equation of the variable to be maximized or minimized. And in this problem, we are maximizing the area, so we will have to find the equation for area. And for a rectangle, that is length times width. In this equation, area is the dependent variable because its value depends on the value of L and W. And we don't really know what is the actual value of A. L and W, on the other hand, are the independent variable in this equation. And remember, in step number one, our equation should contain only one independent variable. And for our case, we have two, the L and W. So what we have to do is to express one variable in terms of the other. And to do that, you just need to find the relationship between L and W. And you know what? Most of the time, it has something to do with whatever is given in the problem. So what you have to do is to just look. For this problem, the given is the perimeter and that is equal to 180 centimeters. Perimeter is defined as the sum of all sides of a polygon. For a rectangle, that is P is equal to 2L plus 2W. Substituting the given value of P, we'll have this equation. Dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we'll arrive at this one. And expressing this equation, W in terms of L, will have this equation. So this is the value of W in terms of L. We just need to substitute this to our equation for A. And we will have A is equals to L times quantity 90 minus L. Simplifying, we have A is equals to 90L minus L squared. And now, this is the equation we are looking for in step number one. An equation that contains only one independent variable. Step number two, set the first derivative of the equation to zero. So we will take the equation in step number one, and we will find the first derivative of a. And that is equal to 90 minus 2l. Next, we will set its value to zero. We will transpose negative 2L to the left side of the equation, divide both sides of the equation by 2, and we will arrive at this equation. L is equals to 45. Step number 3, answer what is asked in the problem. Remember, in a problem, we are not always looking for the value of the variable to be maximized. Sometimes, the problem will be asking for something else that will cause the variable to have a maximum value. For example, in this problem, we are looking for the largest area, meaning the area is to be maximum and at the same time, that is what is asked in the problem. 
However, it would be slightly different if the problem was stated this way. What is the dimension of a rectangle with a perimeter equal to 180 centimeters if its area is to be maximum? Notice that these two problems have the same given and the area for both of these problems has to have a maximum value. They are basically the same only that in this problem we are looking for the area and in this one we are looking for its dimension that will cause its area to have a maximum value. To answer for both of this problem, we follow the same steps. Now, going back to our problem, step number 3, answer what is asked in the problem. And the problem is asking for the value of the largest area. We already have the equation for area in step number 1. We will be using that. Substituting the value of L to this equation and simplifying, we'll have A is equal to 20, 25 square mm. So this is the final answer for this problem. Again, these are the steps in solving for problems involving maxima and minima. Step number one, find the equation. Step number two, set the first derivative to zero. Step number three, answer what is asked in the problem. Okay, let's have another problem. A closed cylindrical tank with a volume of 100 cubic centimeters is to be made. Find the dimension, that's the height and the radius, of the tank which will require the least amount of material in making it. So again, um, we'll apply step number one, and that is to find the equation of the variable to be maximized or minimized. And in this case, we are actually minimizing the amount of material to be used in making a closed cylindrical tank with a volume of 100 cubic centimeters. So basically, we have a cylindrical tank with an unknown dimension. We let it be h for the height and r for the radius. So what exactly are we looking for in step number one? Let us consider this idea. In order to make a cylinder, you will need materials for number one for the walls, number two for the base, the top and at the bottom. So when we say least amount of material, we are actually looking for the equation of the surface area. And for a cylinder, it contains two circles and a rectangle with these dimensions, 2 pi r by h. 2 pi r is actually the circumference of the circular base. Substituting its area for a circle that is pi r squared for a rectangle that is 2 pi r times h. Simplifying, we have surface area is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And don't forget, in step number one, your equation should contain only one independent variable. And for our case, we have R and H. So we have to express one in terms of the other, preferably H in terms of R, simply because there are two R's and only one H. But of course, you can still do otherwise. To do this, we will be looking for something that relates R and H. And the best place to look for this is, of course, on the problem itself. The volume is given, and that is 100 cubic centimeters. The volume for cylinder is equal to pi r squared h. Substituting the value of v, we will have 100 equals pi r squared h. Expressing this equation h in terms of r, we will have h is equal to 100 over pi r squared. Next, we will substitute the value of h here. So we'll have this equation. Simplifying, we have surface area is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 200 over r. So this is the equation we are looking for in step number 1. I just put the value of h in terms of r here because we'll be using it for later. Step number 2, set the first derivative of the equation to 0. So we will take the equation in step number 1 and we will find the first derivative of this. Simplifying, we have SA prime equals to 4 pi r minus 200 over r squared. Setting the value of this to 0, we'll have 0 is equal to 4 pi r minus 200 over r squared. 
Solving for the value of r, we have r is equals to 2.515 centimeters. Step number three, answer what is asked in the problem. And the problem is asking for the dimension. We already have the value of r and that is equals to 2.515 centimeters. Solving for each using this equation and substituting the value of r, we'll have each is equals to 5.03 centimeters. These are the final answer for this problem. Okay, let's have another problem. A cylindrical can is to hold 20 pi cubic meter. The material for top and bottom costs 10 pesos per square meter. And the material for the side costs 8 pesos per square meter. Find the radius r and the height h of the most economical can. The first step in solving this problem is of course to find the equation that will define the variable to be maximized. And in this problem, we have to find the most economical can, meaning the one that will cost less. So we have to consider the cost and the amount of material to be used. For the amount of material, let us again consider this cylinder with the dimension h for height and r for radius. To create this cylinder, you will need materials for the side and materials for the top and bottom. Remember that we are looking for the most economical can, the one with the least cost, meaning we're actually minimizing the cost of making this cylindrical can. And that means for step number one, the equation we are looking for is actually the equation that defines the cost. The total cost is unit cost times quantity. For the material to be used for the top and the bottom of the cylinder, the total cost will be 10 pesos per square meters multiplied by the amount of material needed and that is the area of the top and the bottom. For the sake of discussion, we'll call this total cost A and it is equal to 20 pi r squared. For the material for the side, that is 8 pesos per square meter multiplied by the area of the side, we'll call it the total cost B. The area on the side is in a shape of a rectangle with the dimension 2 pi r by h. So therefore, the total cost B is equal to 16 pi r h. Solving for the overall total cost of the material, we simply have to add costs A and B, and we will have this equation. But since the equation contains two independent variables, we have R and H, we have to express one variable in terms of the other. In this situation, we will express H in terms of R. So to do that, we will be using the given volume. So we have 20 pi, the given volume, is equal to pi r squared h. Expressing this equation h in terms of r, we will have h is equal to 20 over r squared. We will substitute this value to our equation of the total cost and simplifying, we will have tc, the total cost, is equal to 20 pi r squared plus 320 pi over r. This is the equation we are looking for in step number 1. Next step is to set the first derivative of the equation to 0. Using the same equation we obtained in step number 1, we will find the first derivative of Tc, and that is Tc prime is equal to 20 pi quantity 2r minus 220 pi over r squared. Simplifying, we will have Tc prime is equal to 40 pi r minus 320 pi over r squared. Setting the value of Tc prime equal to 0, we will have this equation. Solving for the value of r, we will have r is equal to 2 meters. Step number 3, the problem is asking for the value of the radius and the height of the cylinder. We already have the value of the radius and that is 2 meters. Solving for the value of each, we'll be using this equation. Substituting the value of r and simplifying, we will have the value of h equal to 5 meters. These are the final answer for this problem. So to conclude, again, 
These are the steps in solving problems involving maxima and minima.